in this tutorial we are going to take a look at how to make one of these pencil holders. Uh, it's going to teach us how to work with these uh, eighth inch steel blanks and we're going to do some basic layout uh, using a combo square and then we're also going to fold them uh, using the Haasfeld bender. You can see one of those legs is already folded up and uh, combo square is going to uh, help us along this process and uh, we'll learn how to kind of tweak those bends um, the bends that we get off of the Haasfeld bulldozer die setup, and uh, we're also going to learn about how to clamp and fixture this together uh, with the aid of an aluminum chill block and fixturing block. So it'll be a, a lot of clamping going on and some creative uh, ways to fix any distortions in your metal. Uh, and we'll also learn how to grind this thing and make it look, you know, nice, bright, and shiny. And so it's a good welding and fit-up exercise. And uh, of course, we'll also want to deburg using some uh, hand tools and files. And you can even see that little, uh, the the black box there, the black pencil holder, is one that we've finished, put a patina on. We might look at that maybe later on in this course. Um, so here's the finished product. Um, stay tuned. I left some of the welds uh, on ground, but you'll see me. Uh, go through and make uh, that pencil holder. So stay tuned and uh, follow along. All right, so make sure that uh, you've got all the gear you need, in particular the safety gear. So here I'm donning my safety glasses, all the standard shop safety rules apply, and we're working with these uh, sheared uh, eighth inch steel blanks. So a pair of uh, light work gloves is going to be pretty handy. So uh, measuring the blank, I've got a little uh, sheet metal gauge here. You could also use a pair of calipers or a tape measure for something this thick, but it's it's eighth inch thick, uh, which measures about um, uh, 120 thousandths uh, or about one eighth of an inch. So that's the thickness of material. Uh, these are cold rolled steel blanks, so we don't have to worry about mill scale. Uh, both of the blanks, the prepared blanks, are eighth inch material, 11 gauge, and um, and we're gonna measure out what their sizes are here uh, to make sure that we have what we're looking for. So I've got a 3 inch by 12 inch blank. If you uh, don't have a prepared one you can cut it to that size and uh, and you want to do that you know pretty accurately so that it fits in the bender. Anything taller than 3 inches won't work for this setup. So 12 inches will give us um, a footprint of about 3 and a quarter inch square. So here I am just checking to verify my dimensions here and also uh, show you guys uh, what we're working with. So uh, make sure that your parts are in fact that size. Always a, a good practice uh, even if you are working from a prepared blank. Next thing you want to do is uh, you know make life a little bit easier for yourself uh, so you don't cut your hands. Um, we're gonna just deburr these. So I've got a couple of methods here. You can kind of take a, a file, maybe a fine tooth file. The burrs aren't too bad on this sheet metal, but uh, with a gloved hand, I'm, I'm going through and just making sure that they're they're not too sharp. And uh, we could use one of these deburring tools, which is um, a great, uh, pretty quick tool for doing stuff like this. There's a little bit of a trick to it. You kind of have to hold it at the right angle, and uh, and you'll want to deburr both those blanks if you're gonna be handling them and measuring them. So uh, good practice to get into anyway. So with the uh, parts deburred, I can uh, handle them a little more safely with ungloved hands. And uh, I'm just using a combination square blade here. You could use a tape measure, whatever is accurate for you. And we're going to line, um, you know, take the dimensions for our bend lines here. We're going to use the Haasfeld bender to close this form in a, in a single loop and weld the flat side. So I've got um, four little tick marks for each corner and uh, the two ends are about an inch and a half from the ends and then I've got a three inch tick mark in between so I've got three three inch spaces and uh, and two inch and a half spaces to make up that fourth side. I'm squaring them off so that I have a nice reference line when I'm working in the, the Haasfeld bender to line it up with the bulldozer die for that v-pin uh, because if you're not square on those bends, uh, you're going to have some issues with uh, twisting and stuff. And I'm just going to mark the tops here, which just make it a little bit easier for me to see what I'm doing over at the bender. So just putting a little dot on the uh, on the thickness of the material. So here you can see those dimensions. We've got uh, half an inch, then three inches, um, three times, and then that last inch and a half segment. Next thing we're going to do um, here is 
prepare the end for welding later on. So what I'm going to do here is set up uh, my method here is just going to be to use uh, one of these sanding discs. Um, I just you know personally find that they they work a little bit better. Make sure that you're assembling these uh, sanders properly. Uh, you don't want the wrong backers and nuts on there. Notice it's unplugged while I'm changing out the discs too, and uh, and I'm gonna. Uh, don some gloves and a, and a face shield and we're going to do this on the opposite side that you marked. We're going to clamp it down and um, and we're just going to take a little bit of material off of the two uh, short edges and we're going to do like maybe a 45 to a 60 degree grind there. Um, again safety gear is always important here so I got some gloves on despite the sparks and the heat and I've got a face shield on um, and we'll get that grinder going and you'll see I'm just sort of swiping the edge there a little bit to um, to allow welding later on uh, a bit easier. If the intention is to uh, grind your welds flat, it's always a good idea to chamfer the edges uh, that are going to meet up and uh, and have somewhere for that weld to sit into. So this is a good practice to uh, to get into, and so we're doing that. Uh, before the form gets closed up. So here's a close-up of uh, just seeing what I'm doing. Notice how the wheel, you know, moves down and away. Um, always good to take into account which direction the grinder is spinning, and I'm aiming those sparks down. You can see just a, uh, well, that's um, about a 60 degree, you know, bevel there. And here's a little closer shot of it, and you can see that there's a there's a the angle portion, and then there's a slight land on it, maybe um, you know a third of the way through. And so you can see I left a little bit of it 90 degrees to, to give myself a, a kind of backstop. You don't want to change the dimension of the material, but we just want a little bit of a, a grind there. Again, uh, I'm just writing down here, you know, a 45 to roughly 60 degree. Steeper is generally better. Uh, 45 is about as, as um, shallow as you want. Now we're over at the Haasfeld Bender, and uh, there should be some support videos on how to assemble this uh, setup uh, in more detail, but I've got the uh, swing arm assembly uh, lined up with about the fourth hole, and, um, and I've got the second hole is going to accept the wrist pin and the, uh, the bulldozer uh, master die there, and then uh, I'm going to wiggle it in. Uh, so that it gets captivated and that fourth hole will then accept in the, in the mainframe the U-pin and, uh, and attach the assembly together and then put in that center pin so that gives you that wrist action, that crushing, crushing motion. Um, this is a great setup for making quick uh, 90 degree bends in uh, flat steel. So I've got the uh, extension arm in there too to give myself a little more leverage. Now here you want to take your time and really line this up carefully it's uh, not always easy getting a great shot with the camera in there, but you can see me kind of peering in and making sure that I'm, uh, you know, lining up that pin right on my mark, and then I give it a good squeeze um, with the uh, extension arm, and then I'll feed it into my next mark and uh, take, you know, take care to line it up, and uh, and we'll give it another squeeze to uh, get our next corner lined up, and. Um, this is again about as thick of a material as you want to work with on this particular setup. And uh, before I go too much further, I kind of noticed that my bends were looking like their alignment was a little funky. So measuring, uh, I can see that that last bend I did was not quite 90, but when I bring it a, a little closer here, you can see that the first two I did are too sharp, right? They're, they're acute. They're what we might call closed in metal shop terminology, a little too closed. So we want to open them up and uh, bring them back to 90. So that little wiggle there shows me uh, that it's a little off. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I grabbed a nice hefty section of pipe and I went over to the, um, the pipe vise um, on the other side of the uh, shop there, pulled to that big metal table, and uh, we'll clamp that pipe in uh, nice and secure. That pipe is uh, small enough in diameter that I can slip um, you know, my tube through it uh, but still pretty be beefy so that I've got enough leverage. The bigger the pipe you can stuff in there, the better. And then I'm just going to um, tap on the corner that is too uh, closed to acute of an angle and try and open it up uh, carefully to 90. Give it a few taps. Um, you know, go slow here as well and bringing that part as close to the uh, chain uh, close to the table is best when sort of banging around on things so that everything stays a little more rigid. And that one you can see is really, uh, you know, really 
way too acute so we're just going to give it a little tap and you can see it start to open up for me. So this is a pretty handy little trick in terms of how to uh, open up bends, uh, 90 degree bends and make them a little sharper. So there's a lot of um, you know fussing here and so here's that that third one that I did and you can see I still need a little bit more bending. So that one's actually too open. So pretty simple fix there. Bring it back over to the bender and now this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my pressure and I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit. So now I'm nudging it um, and you can see the bender flexing a little bit there. Um, and I'll check it and it looks like we did it there so it's it's nice and um, closer to 90. So now we're going to close this form up hopefully if we laid out our marks and did everything carefully and you can see a little closer shot there of, of me just kind of trying to feed it in you know playing with the light there to make sure that I can see what I'm doing and then if everything went well that last bend should line up and close the form and those two parts should uh, either touch or come real close to touching uh, and here you can see that that is reasonably close to uh, square but it might need a little bit more love back over at that um, at that pipe so there's our closed form and um, if you are able to uh, and you can see that there's still a little bit of twist there so we'll, we'll learn in our next segment how to um, how to fix that so back over to the to the pipe and the vise and uh, and we can see that I'm tuning up the various um, corners here giving it a few taps with the hammer and uh, we'll learn in part two of this uh, series here um, in kind of week two if you will um, how to correct the remaining uh, distortion that you can't quite um, work with so here I'm just checking the last four corners making sure that they're all nice and square and uh, if you're able to do this uh, on your own um, then that's going to be a pretty good place to be for um, for this segment so I'd, I'd leave it there and then we'll do in week two uh, we'll explore how to clamp it and fixture it. Uh, we'll also get into uh, welding it um, and some techniques on how to tack weld it properly. And then we'll also get into some grinding, um, some light deburring, and, uh, and then we'll finish it off. And um, so stay tuned for part two. Uh, and remember to always be safe in the shop. Make sure you're wearing your safety gear. And if you, of course, have any questions, ask the shop technician and ask your instructor. Uh, and uh, work work safely and good luck.